It's a great pleasure for me to introduce the next speaker for today, and that's Wynn Coucher. Wynn is pursuing his PhD and is a NSF graduate research fellow at University of California, Riverside. His research focuses on sources, transport, and fate of plastic pollution in the environment. He also helps in identification of solutions for plastic pollution and assessing their effectiveness. Wynn is also involved with nonprofits like Let's Do It World and Five Jars and some government agencies like Squirp and Ocean Protection Council. To, this is for implementing science in practice. So welcome Wynn and the floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Suja. I'm really looking forward to talking with everybody today. All right, so the title of my talk is Open Source Raman and IR Spectroscopy, Paving the Future for Spectral Analysis Using Artificial Intelligence. So lots of cool stuff to talk about. Um, the outline, I'm going to first start out by talking about the state of spectroscopy and microplastic research. I'm going to discuss a vision that I have for an open source community around spectroscopy. And then I'm going to talk about how that community can integrate with AI to advance spectroscopy analysis at large, um, including my, in microplastic research and, and beyond. I'd like to start out by thanking um, my advisor, Dr. Gray. I definitely couldn't do this without him and all of my collaborators uh, who have really put in a lot of effort to make um, the projects that I'm going to show you today uh, a reality. Also, I'd like to thank my funding agencies. So in microplastic research, a lot of times we get samples that look like this. You can have small pieces of microplastic, you can have crabs, organisms, sediments, um, and the challenge is trying to pick out the plastic from, from the sample in the environment. Um, and why this is really important for us to sample microplastics in the environment is because you can't manage what you can't measure. If we want to end microplastic in the environment, we need to be able to measure it. Um, and visually, I can see a lot of things that look like microplastic in this sample, but there are also some things that are kind of questionable. And so that's really where spectroscopy comes in. Um, so we did a review of all of the techniques that are being used right now um, to classify plastics in environmental samples. Um, and you can see that there are several different visual techniques, op optical microscopy one, being one of the most, um, most used. And then there are also chemical techniques that are used to validate um, the optical microscopy um, <clears throat> observations. And the two most common that are used for um, chemical validation are FTIR and Raman. So, we think that these techniques are, are really important for us to advance uh, microplastic methods. And in another review, we tried to synthesize all of the different variables that somebody needs to think about whenever they're conducting a microplastic method. And so these are all of the variables that um, a, a researcher needs to think about whenever they're conducting a FTIR or Raman measurement. You can see that there's a lot of different variables um, and it's really complicated as a, as a new um, practitioner in spectroscopy to really hit the ground running um, measuring microplastic spectra because of how complicated it is. And um, in this figure here, I actually have an example of, of uh, the same exact microplastic Raman spectra from three different labs. Um, and you can see that those spectra also look quite different. So um, we really need to get together and, and uh, work together to develop methods that are, that are gonna be um, beneficial for everyone and simplify some of these complicated variables so that um, microplastic researchers can really hit the ground running. And what we found in during our review process is that 30 out of the 53 papers that we reviewed, um, you uh, developed their own reference library, their own spectral reference library and tools, which seems to me like a lot of uh, 
duplicated effort. Um, and so we have all of these people who are getting into microplastic research and the first thing they have to do is spend maybe you know, months to a year to develop spectral analysis techniques. Um, and I'd like to see that process really sped up. And so the vision that I'd like to share with you today is this vision called open spectroscopy. Um, and we're kind of putting it all under the umbrella of this uh, name open specy for now. Um, and what open specy is all about is about collaborating, sharing, and helping to advance processing and identification techniques of uh, Raman and FTIR spectra. And the first part of this project is a software that we've developed, an open source software called OpenSpecky. It's currently available at uh, www.openspecky.org. There's also an R package that is currently on GitHub, but is just got uh, released to the CRAN um, today. So it's undergoing a uh, review from the CRAN reviewers. So you should be able to use a lot of these functions in R in the R programming language very, uh, very soon, really simply. And I'm gonna give you a quick demo of the current OpenSpecy tool. You're actually going to get a demo of the tool um, that nobody else has seen before because this is, this is the uh, next big release. So I'm really excited to share this with everybody. All right, so in OpenSpecy, when you first go to the website, this will be on soon, um, you will be able to get all of the SOPs and you can download the data for the reference libraries. You can uh, do uh, push uh, bug reports, update requests, um, contribute spectra to the group, um, all sorts of stuff. And our main features that we're working on right now are uh, under three different tabs. So the first one is just uploading a file and we have a sample file here that people can uh, use to try to get started on the tool. And you can just drop that. And if you have this selected, you automatically are sharing your spectra with an online um, open source community while you're also using the tool for, for your own benefit. Um, and after you upload the spectra, the tool assumes everything's in absorbance. So if it's in transmittance or reflectance, you have to um, convert it. And then if you'd like to proceed further and start to pre-process your spectra, you can go to the next tab and the data just gets translated over to the next tab. Um, and we have three different main tools that we're using for IR and Raman spectra smoothing, baseline correction and range selection. And you can kind of toggle those on and off. Um, and then you can click these and, and change how smooth um, or how much the baseline correction um, is working. And then so once you get a really clean spectrum, so we'll clean this one up a little bit. Yep, looks good. Then you can click match spectrum and then you're automatically trying to identify the uh, spectrum that you uploaded against an online reference library and you can select which types of what type of spectra how you'd like to analyze that match and you can view all of the top matches here really simply so the goal with this is to streamline spectral analysis and make it extremely user friendly to um, somebody who's just getting started with spectroscopy. You can see I only really had to make four clicks to get all the way to the end. Um, and we've been spending a lot of time building pop-ups like this so that if you hover over a um, uh, feature, then it'll just explain to you what that is. Um, so we're trying to improve accessibility. We also currently have this Google Translate feature, which will allow you to translate um, into different languages, um, and many different languages are supported with that. Uh, and we, we are going to continue making accessibility one of our top priorities. All right, I'm going to go back to the slideshow here.
think this might be having a problem. Let me embedded within all of this technology in the open source, uh, open specy software. We also have a really big idea that we think is going to revolutionize spectroscopy. Um, and that is, I think I, I hinted to this while I was going through the demo, but essentially whenever users are um, interacting with the tool, they have the option to share their data with the spectroscopy community. And as far as I know, this isn't uh, a tool that is embedded within any of the current software that are out there. Um, and so I think that it's going to make a really, a really big difference. And all of that, all of that spectra is shared open source with anybody who wants to use it. Um, and so whenever you do decide to share data, um, you can also input metadata. So if you know more information about, about the spectra, you can, you can do that too. Um, and then the second thing that we're doing in the background is we're tracking all of the, at least on the, on the web application, we're tracking all of the inputs that people do. So if you adjust the intensity, if you uh, adjust the smooth or the baseline correction, um, all of those things, we can then use that information to develop um, algorithms that help us to improve uh, spectral analysis. Um, and I'll talk about that next. So I just want to remind you that, um, bring up this slide again, that identification of plastic spectra is really challenging. And one of the big community needs that we see is that um, we need to have a way to rapidly identify spectra without having um, a bunch of different input parameter options and do it accurately. So what we'd like to see in the future is a tool where you upload the spectra, an artificial intelligence algorithm interprets that spectrum, and then um, it identifies it for you at a high level of accuracy. And so that's really one of the big goals that we're trying to push by collecting all of this data um, from the OpenSpecy community. And the AI framework is going to be built using um, OpenSpecy community data to constantly develop a semi-supervised machine learning algorithm. And I'd be happy to talk with anybody about um, ideas for that. We're just getting started. Right now we have a working concept at this GitHub page. I'd love to have uh, contributors work with us on that. And the, the types of contribute, uh, contributors that we could work with right now and that we'd, we'd love to work with are um, coders, data sharers, beta testers, spectra cleaners, and um, any sponsors that could help to assist us to keep the lights on. And you can get in contact with me if you'd like to join the open specy community and work more closely with us. Or also, um, just getting on the tool and using it would be great too. All right, so in summary, spectroscopy use is becoming the status quo for plastic pollution research. Open Specy eliminates duplication of effort, improves access to spectral analysis tools, removes barrier to entry for new practitioners, and advances spectroscopy techniques. Also, I'd love to add that I'm an open data fanatic and I have a huge database full of different trash and microplastic related data, data sets at this link that I've shared here in the final slide. So thank you so much for your time.